Hello friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about spooky stuff for kids. I am interested in thinking about why horror genre texts are being marketed and sold towards children. Um, I think especially as we approach fall in the bookstore, I see a lot of texts that clearly appeal to young people but are also based on the cover very much coded as spooky and horror horrific i am curious as to what these texts are teaching children are they purely for fun purely for spooky disturbing goosebumpy on your skin feels like is that the goal? Is it entertainment? Or is there something didactic? Is there something at its core that these texts are teaching children or pushing children to ask questions about? I thought I would make a recommendation of texts that I haven't asked that question about, but I thought were spooky and had autumnal vibes. Coraline by Neil Gaiman is disturbing. It's about a young girl named Coraline who has parents who are very busy and they they don't dote on her, she's alone a lot. And so when she moves into a new house and finds this tunnel into basically a, a replica of her world, she has another mother and another father and these parents are wholly devoted to her in a very uncomfortable way. The whole concept of this mirroring world, this sickly, sweet, obsessive uh, mirroring world is disturbing. It's horrific. Like, if you haven't read Coraline as an adult, I think it's definitely still worth the read. These are all for middle grade students, by the way. So if your your middle grade child hasn't read Coraline, this would be a fantastic book to pick up this season because I think it does really capture that, like, spooky, dark feeling that we sort of reach towards in October. The next book I have here is uh, The Graveyard book, also by Neil Gaiman. So this is about a boy called Nobody, and he is being raised by ghosts in a graveyard. Part of the, like, driving force of this book is Nobody is growing up, and he wants to leave the graveyard, but if he leaves the graveyard, the man that murdered his family will get him. He is only safe in the graveyard. And so there's this, like, murder, this mystery, there are ghosts. Um, we have a young person interacting with the dead, and I think any time that we get young people to think about death, it's a good thing. Not being afraid of our own mortality is a good thing. And so, again, if you're looking for a sort of spooky read this Halloween season for your middle grader, I would recommend The Graveyard Book. The next book that I have here is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden, which is about sort of a secret bargain with this scarecrow king. There's this figure that a family has made this ancient bargain with, and when the school bus gets sort of stuck in this mist, our main character and her friend escape the bus and are running through the woods, and all of her classmates get turned into scarecrows as part of this bargain. They are part of the sacrifice. And so, again, there is the deeply unsettling figure of the scarecrow. There's something... There's something, I guess, a little bit disturbing about something that takes on a human form that doesn't have life. I do find scarecrows a little bit disturbing. And so the idea that these scarecrows are sort of turning and watching them silently, uh, I found deeply unsettling. I liked the mystery aspect of this book. I think it's a very fun fall read. I do think Catherine Arden is a fantastic author. You may recognize her from The Bear and the Nightingale. Um, she wrote a phenomenal fantasy series for adults. Her writing is also great for kids. So if you have a little person, a little person, if you have a middle grade student, a middle grade child who is looking for autumnal reads, again, I would recommend this because it's just creepy vibes, creepy vibes, cornfields, scarecrows, secret packs with some 
unseen evil. The next book I have here is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is the first book in the series in which a girl who has the ability to see ghosts is taken to one of the most haunted places in the world, Edinburgh. It's a place with a lot of history, a lot of death, and it is very overwhelming for her and her parents don't know that she can see ghosts and speak to ghosts. There is a ghost who is potentially out to get her and her best friend is a ghost. I just think it's fun, the historical aspect of this. I'm very excited for Tunnel of Bones because the premise for these books is that our main character's parents are ghost enthusiasts. Um, one is a historian, one is sort of like more woo-woo hippy-dippy, and the two of them together have been selected for this reality TV show where they explore the most haunted places, and the historian and the historian is interested in the, the death and the historical context that has happened in these places, the trauma that has happened in these places, and the other, the more hippy-dippy one, is interested in the ghost sightings and like the psychic spiritual connection. It's an interesting premise. You're getting a little bit of history, a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of spookiness, and it's great. And if you love this one, there is the sequel Tunnel of Bones out as well. I would recommend this as a fun autumnal read for your middle grade person. The last book I have here is also middle grade, and it is The Nest by Kenneth Opal. So this is about a boy who his family has a new baby, and that new baby has a lot of challenges. I believe the new baby's heart or brain has not developed correctly, and this baby is fighting for its life. The main character, Steve, has been offered this bargain by these wasps. They will build a new, perfectly abled baby to replace his brother if he offers the trade of the imperfect baby for this perfect baby. So it's looking at questions of ability and the value of certain bodies and just the horror of the wasps, what they plan on doing with the baby if Jonah makes this trade. I think in ways that like this is semi-fantastical, it is also very grounded in the real as well. And it's a slightly different approach to horror, um, something unsettling, something more disturbing than out and out supernatural. And I think this also opens up interesting conversations with young people about difference and valuing and accepting difference. In addition to it being quite horrific, like for me as an adult, I was like, holy shit, these wasps are unsettling. It's also a good read. These are the spooky reads for kids that I would recommend. Obviously, I recommend them to adults as well if you are interested in just fun, quick reads that give you spooky autumnal vibes. They're great. Let me know your favorite spooky reads for kids in the comments down below, whether they are things that you actively read as a young person and stand out in your mind as, horrific or there are things that you have approached as an adult either on your own or with your children. I would love to get a sort of like bibliography going in the comments of spooky stuff for kids. Before we go we have to thank my patrons. Thank you patrons for making videos like this and long form projects possible. I really appreciate the work that you are enabling me to do. If you are interested in becoming a patron and supporting this channel and having access to patron perks like the Red Rum Book Club, which is a Stephen King book club that you can join for as little as a dollar a month, your support is so valuable. It legitimizes the work that I'm doing here. It supports the work that I'm doing here. I look forward to seeing all of your spooky children's lit recommendations in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!